My name is Eud, uh, and I'm the technical lead for Clarity at VMware. Um, so today I'm gonna talk about content projection. So if you've ever tried to write a reusable component, uh, whether it's for your own application just inside of your app or as a part of a library, uh, you probably had to project content into it. So today we're just gonna go quickly over the basic cases, and we're gonna poke and prod at Angular to see exactly all the weird behaviors you can get and understand exactly what's happening there. Um, and the way we're gonna dive into it is we're going to count sheep. So turns out that's the definition of our continents. Uh, this is going to be deeply technical, and I'm asking everyone to count sheep, so please don't doze off. Um, what could go wrong, right? So welcome to ng farm. Um, we have a simple pasture component. Uh, it has a fence and an ng content inside of it, so that's the basic content projection. Anything you put inside of my pasture ends up inside of the fence. Uh, and next to it, we have a sheep component. So it's a, again, simple Angular component. It just uses a trick you might not be familiar with um, that counts the number of instances of that component. So every time we get a new sheep, the counter goes up by one and it displays it. Um, yes, this is an actual emoji in the code. You can do that. Uh, you can actually put them in the selectors, but for everyone's sanity, I decided to go with a more traditional one for this talk but you could have emojis in your selectors. So let's just see it in action, that will be easier. So I have my pasture, I put three sheep inside of that, and what I get is this. My three sheep counting one, two, three inside of the fence. This is an actual web app. I did not spend way too much time getting this to work with CSS borders, um, and I wish I could do live examples, but I have way too many to do, so I just share at the end an ex uh, a link to the stack blitz, and those are real examples you can go and play with and try out if you want. Um, so that's the basic content projection, very simple. Uh, another case that's very common and that most of you know is the targeted projection. So ng-content offers a select attribute. Uh, it can take any CSS selector, so here I'm using an element selector for my sheep. Uh, it could be a class selector with dot something, or it could be an attribute selector with brackets, uh, anything you want. So we have our targeted ng-content with the select, and then outside of the fence, we have a catch-all ng-content. So the sheep will go inside of the fence, and then anything else will go outside. So let's say we have a particularly facetious user, and they try to sneak in an elephant next to the sheep. Uh, luckily, with that ng-content select, the sheep are inside of the fence, and the elephants stay outside. So works great. Um, now, I'm, I'm sure most of you are familiar with ng-container. It's this logical element in Angular that lets you group children for any logical reason you want, typically structural directives. Um, and the important part about ng-container is that it's completely transparent. It doesn't produce anything. You can put as many ng-containers as you want inside of your template. The output HTML will be exactly the same. So ng-container never changes anything, it's transparent, doesn't impact your output, it's perfect. So obviously this is still gonna work exactly the same way. Or, wait, not really. So what did happen here? Um, what happened is ng-content happens at build time. It's very basic, almost dumb at that point, but there is a reason for it. So it happens at build time, which means at build time ng-container is still here. It didn't disappear, it didn't produce any out, it didn't you know, let the rest there is no output HTML, it's still here, so ng-content just really looks at the surface of everything, and here it sees an ng-container and an elephant, so everything goes outside, no questions asked. The problem is you often need an extra container, whereas it's ng-container because you need a structural directive or your own component that encapsulates the sheep or anything like this. Well, luckily, Angular provides an undocumented but completely supported feature that is ng-project as, so this is getting into the not as well known parts. Uh, ng project has is an attribute that counterbalances the select attribute ng content and it takes exactly the same kind of selectors. You can receive any CSS selector in here. Once again, we use the my sheep element selector. And by doing this, we tell Angular at build time that this ng container should be project projected as a sheep. So once we do this, now, the sheep goes inside of the fence, and everything's right. Um, except now I feel absolutely terrible for breaking them up. So you know what? Exceptionally, we can make the elephant a sheep too. Um, the important part here is that 
anti projectiles can, can go on absolutely anything you want, any element, and let you disguise it as anything else you want for the purpose of content projection. So if you're wrapping your whatever you're, you're passing to a third party component in your own component, just use ng project as, and it will go in the right place. So we've seen targeted projection, we've seen the more basic cases. Uh, now we're gonna try hacking Angular. Let's see if we can trick it into doing something it didn't expect to do. So the first thing we can try, and a lot of people have tried this, is cloning the sheep. So you have a pasture, you have a single sheep in there, and what if my pasture's template have, uh, has uh, three ng contents? What do I get? Three sheep, one, one, one? Three sheep, one, two, three? Well, the answer is you get one sheep. That's all. But wait, that's because I have three ng contents. What if I do it smartly? What if I have a single ng content and I put an ng4 on it? Maybe that will work. No, it doesn't. Cloning sheep is a very hard business, requires years of research, just trying to cheat Angular like that won't happen overnight. So this hints toward the fact that this sheep here seems almost protected by Angular. So maybe we can try one last thing before we explain what happens. It's putting an ng if on the ng content. So if we put an ng if on the ng content and toggle it on and off, it's on, we have our sheep. It's off, our sheep is gone. It's back on, the sheep is back. We're playing hide and seek here. So this might be exactly the behavior you expect, but if you're familiar with ng-if, ng-if promises you that anything inside of it will be properly destroyed and recreated every time. Not happening here. We still get the first sheep, the very same one we had before. We didn't recreate a new one. So what's happening here is that ng content doesn't produce any content. It just moves existing one from one place to another. Think of it like a pen child on HTML DOM nodes or jQuery.append, which is also very popular. It just moves an element from one place to another, and if you chain a pen child, well, only the last parent will actually get the elements. The previous one will just get it for a second, and then it will move on to the next one. So, <clears throat> In, in the case of our several ng contents, the first one would get the, the sheep. It would match on every single one of them, but only the last ng content would get the sheep. So why does Angular do this? Um, the actual main reason before anything else is that you have consistent expectations. If, your pa if the pasture is not yours, if it's a third party component, and you give that third party component a cute little sheep, you wanna make sure that that third party component won't be able to abuse it. You give it a cute sheep, you get back a cute sheep in good health. That's the entire point. So Angular protects that sheep, and in technical terms, what that means is the life cycle of the sheep is tied to the place where it was declared, not the place where it ends up being displayed in the HTML, okay? So the third party component cannot control the life cycle of the sheep. Only you, because you declared it, can. Now, another side effect, and I consider this more than a side effect than a real reason, is that, as we said, ng-content is pretty basic and happens at build time. And then anything that happens at build time means you don't have to do it at runtime. So if you have an application that displays a thousand components, you don't go over every single one of those components at runtime, figure out what goes where, match it, and then move it. You do it at build time, and then you render it directly in the right place in the application. So you just get better performance because of that. Now, Breeding sheep is actually a very valid use case. I can't do it right now. I tried, tried ng4, nothing works. So what can I do? Well, we're all engineers here, so we all know that the only thing you need to breed sheep are blueprints. Um, so what Angular calls blueprints are template refs. Um, or, well, blueprints in Angular are called template refs. Uh, template ref is basically you put an ng template element around something, and that something becomes a blueprint. You can use it to reproduce that content as many times as you want. So you can use ng template like that, and maybe you're not familiar with that, but there's another syntax for it that you might be very familiar with, which is the structural syntax directive. So the star, the star uh, syntax here is just syntactic sugar 
for wrapping whatever it's on inside of an ng template. So here, those two are completely equivalent. You could write one or the other, they end up being exactly the same. The first one actually desugarizes to the second one when compiling. So that's how you write your template refs. But the problem is how do you get a hold of them? How do you get a hold of the actual template ref object to use it? Well, easy options are querying for it with view child or contain child, um, but no one likes writing ng templates. It's verbose, it's long. I'm gonna show how to do it with a structural directive because that's a very nice one line syntax. So to do it, you write your directive as an attribute directive. Basic selector, that's a select attribute selector. And in the constructor, you just ask for the template ref. And Angular will give you the template ref for that structural directive directly in the constructor. So in our case, I ask for the template ref, I ask for the parent farm component, and I tell the parent farm component, hey, these are the blueprints for sheep, that's how you can create more of them. That's what I'm doing here, very simple. Now how do you use this? Well, on the application side, you just put your pasture, you put your sheep inside with that structural directive. So technically what you're giving here to the farm they're farms now, not pastures, because you're breeding sheep, obviously. Um, so the farm, the, the, what you're giving here is not an actual sheep, it's a model of how to create sheep. And now, in the farm template, instead of having three ng contents, we use three ng template outlets, which is just a directive that Angular provides to easily stamp out a template ref. There are other ways, other APIs, using TypeScript services from, from Angular, uh, but that's the most straightforward and easy way to use it. And when we do that, we get our sheep, one, two, three. We only passed one as part of the app, and we get three displayed at the end. The most important part here is that they count correctly, one, two, three, which means they're naturally bred organic sheep, not weird clones that show one, one, one. Each sheep is properly instantiated, and from there will be a separate instance that will behave differently based on user actions. That's the most important part. Now, of course, everyone's gonna say, yeah, this is all fine and good, but there's no way I can copy-paste template outlets all over the place. Well, as I said, you can use view container ref and other services from Angular. They're all pretty complicated, but if you wanna just use the very simple stuff, well, luckily, ng4 offers a template option. You just use ng4, you pass it a template, and it's gonna use that template instead of whatever is inside of the ng4. So here, I give my sheep template to ng4, and I still get my sheep, and I still count one, two, three, exactly the same way. You remember we had this ng if example, okay? We can do the same using template ref with ng if. So we have our template outlet, and we have our ng if on it, and this will properly destroy and recreate a new sheep every time. So for obvious animal rights reasons, I'm not gonna show this live, this would be far too cruel, but it works exactly the same way. If I were to do it and toggle it, I'd get sh first sheep one, then hide, then show again, it'll be sheep two. Hide and show again, it'll be sheep three. So delete and recreate a new instance every single time. So we've seen ng-content. We've seen ng-template, right, uh, ng-template. Um, is there any way we can maybe combine the two to trick Angular, because we're smarter than Angular. There's, there has to be something we can do. Um, well, kind of, sort of, we can do some things, um, and there are use cases. So before I actually show what we can do, I'm gonna show a use case that's a valid one and see exactly what we can get out of it. So this is something you see all over the place. I think every single app I've seen at least tried this once. You have you're projecting your, your sheep, and instead of having simply a pasture or farm now, we grew up, we expanded, and we have a barn and, and the outside of the barn. And we have a whole farm, and what we want, obviously, is the sheep to be in the barn during the night and outside during the day. So when you try this during the day, once again, real web app, uh, <laughs> during the day, you have your sheep outside. Everything's fine, you're good, um, they're okay. Then night comes, they disappear. Who knows where? Presumably out in Salt Lake City, partying somewhere, because they come back the next day completely ready for the new talks. Um, so what did just happen here? It's always coming back to the same thing. NG content is basic, happens at build time. So when we project our sheep, 
At build time, Angular is going to see, oh, we have an ng content, a first one in the barn. The sheep go here. Then we see the second one. Oh, wait, no, they go in the second one. So the sheep at build time end up in the second ng content. Then they display nicely. Night comes, <coughs> sorry, night comes, they are still inside of that second ng content. It turns out it's not displayed because there is an ng if, but they're still inside of that. So when, when the day comes again, they display again, and, and they never move back to the previous energy content. It happened at build time, and they match to the second one, so they're going to stay in the second one forever. But this is, this is something everyone wants to do all the time. A button that becomes a span, depending on something, because it's not clickable. Lots of options. So how do we actually do this? How do we move the sheep from inside to outside of the barn? Well, once again, we're all engineers, and we know that the only reasonable way to safely move something from point A to point B are portals. So a portal is just a coin that community, the community, it's just a term the community coined, um, and it's that little contraption at the top, very simple. I put my ng content inside of an ng template. What does that do? Well, what that does is anything I will put inside of my farm will be projected inside of that template, which gives me pretty much a template ref that contains anything that was inside of the farm, the entire content, right? Remember, template ref doesn't produce anything, doesn't show anything. So here, if we left it like that, we, didn't, we wouldn't display anything as part of the farm. But now we have a template ref, which we named portal here, so we can reuse it in the template. So we did just like before. We have our barn, we have our outside, and instead of having two ng contents with ng if, we have two ng template outlets with ng if. We saw that earlier, right? Exactly the same thing. And so what now happens is, during the day, they're outside stamped by the second template outlet. Then night comes, and the second outlet, template outlet dis disappears, but the first one just gets the template ref and puts it inside of the barn. So now they're correctly inside of the barn. And then day comes back, and they move outside again. Once again, the one thing you have to notice here is those counters. They're still one, two, three. They're still the exact same sheep we had from before. So we get template refs, right? And before that, template refs allowed us to destroy and recreate sheep. But those sheep are part of the ng content inside of template refs. So Angular is still protecting them. You won't be able to destroy them. Their life cycle is tied to the application itself, not the farm component. So what we learned here is that no matter what we do, no matter how much we try to cheat, Angular always prevented us from abusing the projected sheep. So if you take anything out of this, this talk today, it's going to be the next two points, which is depending on what your component is going to do, that will decide its API. So you define the behavior, then that decides the API, and based on that, it will decide the implementation. You don't start implementing first, that won't work. So if your component takes something and just displays it exactly as is, then content projection is perfect. It's what you want. It's a one-one match. You get a sheep, you display a sheep. If you want more than one sheep, if you want the same one but recreating it every time, if you don't want to display any, you need blueprints. You need to receive a template outlet for this. So. <clears throat> um, Always look at the behavior of your component, then decide what the API is going to be, structural directive, template ref, or just content projection, and then you can implement it. Always go that way. So that was it. This is the stack bits with all the examples. Um, I, you, you can go ahead and try and play with it. Uh, it has every single example, all the portals. You can try everything you want. Um, just fork it, please. <laughs> and try it out, and that's it. Thank you for listening, and I promise I didn't destroy any sheep during the making of this presentation.